well. And the moment of truth has arrived. The second and uh, final half of the senior boys or over 16 finals in this Bermuda Lindos Bermuda School Sports Federation knockout final. A scoreless first half between these two teams. And now it comes down to the final 35 minutes. Andrew, I wonder, could we see kicks from the penalty spot for a third time tonight? Yeah, I wouldn't put it past the way these two teams are getting at each other. As you can see, it's very physical. There's a lot of flying tackles out there. Great control there by number 10, Daniels. We get to see uh, the Dandy Town Hornet superstar very closely here because Dimitri Daniels is, was working on the far side in the first half. Now he's going to be directly in front of us. So we'll see exactly what sort of damage and penetration he can do as far as breaking down this strong Saltus defense. Saltus now trying to get something going up there. There's the big man himself. And Daniels does well to shield off Pacheco, who he is a running machine in the midfield for Saltus. That tough tackling center midfielder. If I have to give uh, the upper hand to a particular team from the first half, I would have to say that Salters uh, did that. They, they definitely controlled the tempo of the match, while in spurts we saw Cedarbridge uh, get things going. Even though uh, Parsons was a tower of strength right in the center for Cedarbridge, they, something is missing up front. And they need to be able to string passes together and get something going up front. They need players like uh, number 14, uh, Battersby, to get more in the mix. I don't think we called off that name that often in the first half, so we need to see more from Battersby. Didn't really call off Carlington either. He's been a spectator up there for most of the game. Uh, Carlington, was he on the field? He was on the field. Number 17. Okay, I thought he just came on. I didn't, I don't recall seeing him up there in the first half. However, I stand to be corrected. <clears throat> but so just was the battle team in the first half. And they did in fact have the ball in the back of the net, but it was a disallowed goal. It's gonna be a throw in for Cedar Bridge on the far side. Once again, it's still scoreless. These players want to be at their best tonight to try and pick up a scholarship. Here's Cedar Bridge looking for Daniels. I think it's going to be really hard for him to pull that one in. Throw in Salters. Williams plays it back to Lulo. A throw in to be taken by Arujo, Nicholas Arujo. <clears throat> now, Arujo's father is an uh, outstanding powerboat racer. I don't think he's been racing here of late, but uh, in his day in the C class, he had, he had himself a whole lot of power. Sporting must run in his family. Yeah, yeah, sporting family, the Arujos. The throw very quickly taken. Godfrey looking for Simons up there, but didn't quite find him. See the bridge clear the danger. Salters. I just feel that Cedar Bridge needs an, another attacking player. Some of us on fresh legs to come off the bench to maybe spark a little bit more attacking play. Here's the throw. Once again, Cedar Bridge find themselves in a defensive position. <clears throat> Here's your good friend. Shaco, good work there by 
Rochester. Laid off there by Collington. Uh, back to Collington, but... Big number two for Soltis down there, Jalen Smith. Gives it up to Cedarbridge. Carlington needs help up there. Padre Burgess. Oh. Whistle goes. Players are asking, what was the call? I'm baffled myself. I think it's the Cedar Bridge free kick going in. For what? What was the call? I, I, I just don't know what the call is. I mean, you, I'm not on the field. I don't know if something was said. I can't I, see everything. I think, I think it was tugging. <clears throat> okay. It's a three-man wall. And uh, that doesn't appear to be 10 yards. And uh, I don't really think they need a 10-man, I mean, a three-man wall. From that distance? From that distance. <clears throat> Maybe just one person staying on the ball, but there's oh. Daniels, and he's wasted another opportunity. They keep trying this long shot. Maybe they should try a different approach, try to drop one in the box. Try to get a hat on to it. Somebody's got to come up with the winner, or for the third time tonight, we're going to see kicks from the penalty spot. Which indeed I think is thrilling, but uh, I think that um, I'd like to see it settle. Somebody finding the back of the net. And there's a short pass to Pacheco, and he does well to escape the two player challenge. Godfrey looking for the forward pass, trying to find Simons. Simons precious. And the goalkeeper almost made an error. Should have. Should have cleared for the touch line just now. He tried to kick it straight out. Oh, look at that. As Evans, who's been lively, falls to Simons. Very courageous move by the goalkeeper, Jordan Casarano, to dive to the feet there. And here's Dimitri. Is that Caldre? Caldre Burgess. Oh, look at that. The whistle has to go for that. you have you noticed something about all the games tonight well it, it, it's, it's looked like a hot potato out there to me Mike they've, they've oh, really been going at each other that's not what I was getting at no cards oh um, yeah that's what that's what I'm took out of it teams haven't really had time to settle down the Barkley girls did string up a lot of passes they looked a good technical side a lot of other teams have been playing them more direct. And also it seems that teams that are um, that attack the northern the northern field have had the better play. Mm -hmm. Maybe because the lighting is better down there. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, what I was getting at is none of, the, none of the officials have issued cards tonight. I think it's, uh, it's just something that uh, they're just not going to do because this is not like league action where you could suspend them. So the referee just tries to keep, keep them calm and uh, tell them to, uh, you know, be, be sportsmen. Play it in a sportsman-like manner. Uh, Car Carlington. Yes. Who does look lively or does oh, and Held on to it too long there, Andrew. Oh, they, they regain possession. Oh, uh, they give it up. Try yeah. to force it through just now. He had better options. Oh, boy. A slide yep, tackle. Yep. I, knew, I knew the referee was going to have none of that. A two-footed challenge. Yep, anytime Studs is showing, she's not going to have any of that. And that's a wonderful ball to Godfrey, who doesn't... His first touch was, 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 wasn't the best. Falls to Burgess, but Pacheco cleans up. And no, he is not going to get across Pacheco like that. He is no. firm. 
Caldre Burgess must learn to calm down. He's getting, uh, he's, he's, he's losing his temper. And I believe that number nine down there uh, for Soltis, which is uh, Williams, is saying some things to him and is losing his temper. And uh, twice down here you saw him, he, he lost control. There again, when he goes into a tackle with someone, he's losing control. And Williams is edging him on by saying certain things to him. And it's taking him off his game. That's Here's a free kick. Bell with the cross, it's an excellent cross. But Bell should, he should really be one in the box. He's one of the taller players on the field. And a good header of the ball, he should be in the box. We're now in the 47th minute and still scoreless. Williams runs over to take the corner for Soldiers. And it's Lewin Hart in their post, but Cedar Bridge clears it. And it's out for Soldiers Thurian. Cedar Bridge just pinning back in the half. Can one of these teams come up with the winner? That is the question. And of course, you're watching all of the Lindos knockout finals, BSSF knockout finals here on BSN. If you are going to be watching this channel constantly, you will see volleyball action, netball action, and several of these football or soccer finals, whichever you prefer. Mike, I wonder how many of these Cedar Bridge players are actually tired because they did have a Christmas play last night. And I'm pretty sure it ended late. So I wonder how many you, are tired from do you, that. Do you think some of these players were in it? <laughs> are you saying that? <laughs> I would think so. I know that when I was a senior in high school, I didn't want to be in any play. <laughs> I would watch it, but I didn't want to be in. <laughs> Nevertheless, it's a free kick for Salters. Cedar Bridge appeared to be putting together a four-man wall. This is in a dangerous spot. Simons is looking lively in the box, making space. It's a light chip. Oh. They just needed a touch. That's all they needed. Everyone was onside. They beat the offside trap. And here comes Cedar Bridge on a quick break. He's looking to switch the plate, and it's an excellent ball, and the flag stays down. You realize just now the captain uh, for Cedar Salters, Ashton Bow, was the one that almost scored, but he was able to get back. He sprinted in back into the defense, and here comes Salters. Oh, cut out nicely. That pass would have been able to get through. Something could have happened there. And That's bad there's, again. there's the skipper. He's a, up front. He's in defense. He's had an excellent game. And what a wonderful oh, ball. No, that's too firm. Can he get to it? Doesn't quite have the legs. You notice the tempo is... Uh, Slow it up a bit here. Yeah, some heavy legs, Mike, as I see a Cedar Bria sub warming up. So they're going to bring on Sanjay Dill. No, excuse me, uh, Darren Usher. That name uh, we called off frequently in a previous match. Must be a brother or relative of his. See who's coming off. As Usher comes onto the field. And there's Carlington going off. Yep, Jody. I think there's a spelling error in here. I think his name is Cody. Okay. And he's a St. George's coach player. I'll accept that. <laughs> you get no argument from me. <laughs> Throw in for Salters. Quickly taken there by Arujo. Goal kick. 
referee's assistant. Well, we're drifting ever so close to kicks from the penalty spot once again. 51 minutes down and still scoreless. I'm just looking down at the touchline and both coaches have this unsure look on their face. Excellent by Williams who plays it out in the end. But it was a good attempt, flipped it over his head. You realize also, Andrew, there has been no scoreless match thus far that we've uh, broadcast. And uh, I would uh, not be happy to see that the grand finale finishes without a goal and has to go to kicks from the penalty spot. Uh, that, that happens sometimes in a final, especially one with expectations like this one. Real cagey out there. Somebody must be really hyped and eager to to show their skill and talent and put the ball in the back of the net. I think everyone's just afraid to make a mistake. Oh, it's headed forward there by Wolf. And Shaco, oh. And look who it is again. Look who it is again. It's Burgess. Caldre, and this is the second time he's been spoken to. Every time he goes into a tackle. He needs before he you know, finds us all in. Shaco is, is trying to indicate to the referee that this guy is coming after me and, uh, you know. Well, what I think it is, I think Pacheco is just getting the batter off him. And he's getting frustrated and giving up the unnecessary fall. Oh, however you look at it, it's still uh, Burgess who's getting the talking to from the referee. So in her interpretation, she's saying that Burgess is out of control. All right, Jay, get a dash. <clears throat> Over here near the touchline, it's Nigel Williams. Now Pacheco. To Godfrey. He skips cross one, plays it back in the middle, and it's Pacheco. Lovely pass. Uh, but right into a maze of Cedar Bridge players. Wolf. Now let's see what happens here. Mm. Burgess was awarded the free kick that time. Actually, it's against him. There's a sort of story here. Yes, Pacheco was all over his man's back just now. Yeah, it's physical out there. And Godfrey don't seem to have the legs. Parsons will just shield it into touch. Fifty-four now down and scoreless. Burgess keeps it in play. Dimitri. Over here wide to Gibbons Douglas. Dimitri now inside to Wolf. Oh, Parsons. Some lovely passes right here. All good one twos. Can they finish though? Uh, Dimitri does well, but can he deliver and get the cross in? Parsons now overlapping. And Soltis come up with it. Here comes Soltis. Goffers out wide, looking for it. But they look for him too late. And here comes Cedar Bridge again. Daniels skips across his man. Pacheco gives up the fall. No, Cedar Bridge have gotten nowhere trying to shoot from this distance. They really should try a cross in the box this time. As you see, number five, Parsons standing over it. It's got to be a good delivery. And it's a shot. But the goalkeeper had a well watch. 
As they look for Simons, who's up there by herself. He brings it down. Pacheco. And Guffer's out there screaming for the ball. I don't want to talk on Pacheco's shot. And Soldier's house, a free yeah, kick. This is a dangerous position here. This is a very dangerous. Okay, they dressed it back a bit further. See who's going to take it here. Looks like the big number 11. Evans. Three man wall. Evans looks like he's going to have a strike. Taking that Roberto Carlos style run up straight onto it. And he drives it looking for the dip. Doesn't quite get it. Looking more and more like kicks from the penalty spot. We haven't seen a real, real threat on goal for quite some time now. Yeah, it's been a still made up to her, up to now. And Pacheco tries to spin around his opponent. But see the bridge minutes the back. Now can they catch Soltis on the break? And it's Daniels. Who skips cross his player and is still gaming. As Evans having trouble with him. Rochester. He passed in the middle looking for Burgess, but it was intercepted. That was Pacheco doing some more cleanup work. Ah, the referee's assistant has indicated that it's a soldier throw in. And Simon, and there's a foul. Oh, he's frustrated there. <clears throat> Will it be tonight's first card of the game? I'm up to date. That was a, was a nasty challenge just now. No cards, Andrew. Oh, is she reaching for a pocket? Yeah, you're right. And that goes again too. The first booking of the night. Number nine. Goes against uh, Michael Simmons. I'm trying to figure out the logic of giving the car, like, what's it going to do to him? He's not going to miss a match, is he? Mind you, two yellow cards can eject him from the match, but he's not going to miss a match. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to miss a match, and if the but little can, time that's left... They can I, take him out, though. One, I, more, one more foul like that, and he's ejected. <laughs> Throw in, Salters. Arujo. Godfrey brings it down to Williams, he loses the ball and Burgess looks for Daniels in the inside. Doesn't quite get off to him. Wolf knocks it forward. Rochester with the through ball and it's cut out by Bow. Just over one hour of play now and still scoreless. Simons. And he's through. Oh, he's yeah. cross one, he's one on one. Why? He's brought down in the box, the referee has a look. That's a rear breakaway that we've seen in this match. And uh, just not meant to be. The goalkeeper done excellent just now. He was quick off his line, 
clear some darn tricks. He, he, he didn't cut, give him too much space. He caught the angle. And once he advanced, and uh, you know, it made it real, real difficult there for Steven Simons. These two teams have really canceled each other out. Shake it winning that ball. Oh, are they going to come alive for the last 10 minutes, these two teams? And here's Daniels. Rochester. Back to Daniels. Who's offside? The flag goes up. The pass was too heavy, anyways. He would have never got to it. Won't be long now. Steven Simons could have settled it two minutes ago. Eight minutes remaining now unofficially. Yeah, it was a late tackle just now. On Simons. Free kick to Salters. There's Godfrey here lingering at the back. Wide open. Where they look for that. Back post cross. Bow has gone up in the box. It's fallen to Bow. He brings it down on the chest tank. It's still Bow. But see the bridge clears it. Dribbled one step too many. And here's Burgess. Two men in front of him. Passes out wide to Daniels. He gives it back to Burgess. Does an overlapping run. And that was an excellent tackle by. Jalen Smith or Soltis. Now Jalen Smith, is that the son of Wendell Smith? The great, yeah, I believe it is because he's been down there uh, and he hasn't moved, uh, him and his wife, and I believe that's him. That's his son who attends Soltis, number two, Wendell Smith, former St. George's Cup match captain, first player to reach a thousand runs in Cup match. The current, current St. David's. Cricket coach. coach. That's right. And here comes Simons. He looks to skip cross and he does. He has space. Kenny got a good crossover. There's a cross. But the goalkeeper calmly collects it. And Casarano has had a pretty easy day in goal. But Burgess has a long ball and it's given right to him. But there is Smith for the clean up end. Comes off, of, comes off of Burgess. He's jailing Yes? Yeah, that's correct. I just, just asked Wendell if that was his son, and he's confirmed it. Center back for Salters. Godfrey on the outside. Now in the 65th minute, so unofficially five minutes remaining plus injury time. Here. Can anyone find for possession? Can anyone find that all important opening goal? Here's the bridge. Daniels looking at Burgess. He sees him. Ops not to give it to him right away. Comes to Burgess now. He has the quick feet. Goes across the opponent. Looks to slip in. Usher, but Usher didn't read it. The shaker. Caught on possession there by number nine Simmons. Shaker, back to Arujo. He just clears the ball. And here's Burgess. 
Gives it to Daniels. Simmons. For Brothers. He flicks it over top. Wonderful ball to Daniels. And some wonderful defending by Sophie. Burgess here is looking lively on the left flank. The link up play between him and Daniels has been dangerous to Soltis. But they have yet to find that all important fresh goal. Here's Douglas with the throw. Simmons trying to switch the play. Oh. That's Wade with the miscontrol. Mm -hmm. Furbit Wade, unable to control that one. It'll run long. Now in the 68th minute, so just over two minutes of regulation time remaining. We've had spurts of excitement. It remains scoreless. I don't think it's been much off the ball running this game. Not late in the second half. <clears throat> See some good individual efforts. Made right there from Burgess. He puts it around his opponent and does a couple step overs. And then Daniel's fighting for the ball. Simon. Can through here? And he back to Simon. Gets cross him. He was held just now. Yes. Right decision there. He was held. And there's a free kick in a dangerous area. About 20 yards from goal. In the 69th minute, what a time to come up with a winner. What do you say? <laughs> Can I would say so. Here. Oh, the border back a little bit just now. It's about 22, 23 yards out. And who's just standing over the ball? Number nine, Williams looks like it. Goes to take a quick. And it was right at good. That ball was moving just now. That ball, that ball swerved from left to right. And the wall wasn't set. They could be thankful that the goalkeeper was paying attention there. And she really ripped into him. That ball swear from left to right just now, Mike. And Pacheco was fall, clipped on the heels just now. All credit to Jordan Casarano there because his defense was uh, unaware that the free kick was being taken, but the goalkeeper was on his P's and Q's and has kept the score line even. Jordan, the BAA goalkeeper. Playing for his school side, Cedar Bridge, keeping them in the game. The Soltis now has roughly five, five men in the box. There's a sub as we see coming on for Cedar Bridge Academy is Kevin Pacheco. Also coming off here. Looks like Simon. Simons. And coming on is Jordan Medeiros. Actually, he's coming back on. Probably put to put a little height in for this free kick deep into stoppage time. And it's up. And, yep. it, missed, and it fell right to him. Just over 70 minutes, so we are in stoppage time. And it looks as if, uh, sorry I put my mouth on it there in the first half, but it looks like it could be kicks from the penalty spot. Yes, it does like it's going to be a still made them penalty kicks, but it's not over yet. Cedar Bridge has a corner. 
Man, what a what a time to have a corner. Oh, they we're gonna take the short one, but it was spotted. Here's the corner. It's a good corner. It's up. Oh. Soltis with the de good defending. Third been defending good all game. As he tries to get that ball back in the box. It bumbles around. And yes, it's another corner for Cedar Bridge. Oh, the pressure's on here. Going into our second minute of injury time. As Cedar Bridge presses forward to get more men in the box. Falls to Daniels. That's the final whistle. That's all she wrote. It's <laughs> going to the kicks. <laughs> Again, for the third time in this 2012 Lindo's Bermuda School Sports Federation knockout finals for the third time during a day-long festival of soccer, we will see kicks from the penalty spot for the third time. Two, one. And now, for the third time tonight, we go to kicks from the penalty spot. It's going to be uh, Machai Battersby for Cedar Bridge. <laughs> Who scores? Andrew? Well, it, the Soldiers player is taking the next kick, and he's walking up a little nervous. We're seeing that long, slow walk. A lot today, and just about every time the Mr. Hill target. It's number nine there, Williams. And the pressure is on Williams. And he buries it. And as you can hear, the Soldiers crawl goes wild. So does the Soldiers mascot. Dimitri Daniels will step up to the plate now for Cedar Bridge. He should be used to the pressure, Mike. Everybody knows how nerve-wracking penalties can be, but he's a Danny Tom player. They thrive off of pressure. Dimitri Daniels. Up against Georgian Jordan Casarano. Mm. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Oh. And what a goal that was! He got a little. Uh, he Dwayne got a bit Thomas, lucky. Off the footwork, bounced on, and now bounced back into the roof of the of the yeah. net. And he looks up to the sky as a sigh of relief. This is number six, stepping up now for Soltis. I have seen George and Casarano say it penalties before, but he puts that in the pigeon. He gives him no chance at all. And Sammy the mascot goes crazy. Darren Usher. No one has missed as yet, Andrew. Yeah, it looks like uh, depth and well to all this pressure. If you saw a man right say something, to his Soltis, his Soltis teammate. This is number 11. Evans. It's Evans takes a long run up. And he hits it over. He hits it over. 
And I was just looking at some of the soldiers players. A lot of them have their shirts over their head, their hands on their head, like they can't believe it. Simmons now steps up to the plate for Cedar Bridge. Mikhail Simmons. Well, he's wearing that number nine jersey. He can win it. All of his players embrace each other. They're hugging on the half line. It's up to Mikhail Simmons. Can Ture pull off a save? And he buries it. Puts it in the pigeon. We see some accident penalties tonight. They're now leading 4-2. This is a muscular situation for soldiers. I, I think it's the captain, Mike. I would be able to tell. I can't see his left arm. Number 13. Ashton Bell, he's had a good game. And he scores his penalty with ears. Gets up and slots it in with ears. And walks away like he lives for this type of moment. But it's all on Parsons. Now 4-3 to Cedar Bridge. Parsons had a good game down the back. Oh, an outstanding night. But he's a defender, and we've seen defenders choke on the penalty kicks. <laughs> and it's Parsons. And he wins up That's the Cedar Bridge. He wins up for Cedar Bridge. And the crowd goes crazy. <laughs> People waving shirts and jackets in the crowd, jumping all up and down. They're just as excited as the players. This is one of those strange occurrences where, for the first half, Salter's dominated play. You saw sporadic raids by Cedar Bridge. It ended up scoreless and came down to the wire and Cedar Bridge Academy pulled it out of the bag 5-4 with kicks from the penalty spot and what a night it was and the most vocal fans were from Salters they've been silenced but let's, what a night indeed Andrew let's not forget about that that offside girl oh that was uh, yeah we long have to, time, long we have time to check ago the, check the replays for that <laughs> one again because I don't know <laughs> But it has been a treat and a half uh, watching all of these Lindos, Bermuda School Sports uh, Federation knockout finals. And uh, what I like, I like what I'm seeing here, the sportsmanship of Salters. Uh, their heads are high. They played well. They just came up on the short end of the sticks during kicks from the penalty spot. And Cedar Bridge gets the double. Uh, Cedar Bridge gets the double t uh, today. Uh, Clearwater School gets a double. And uh, and Barkley also came good today, as well as West Pembroke. So what an eventful night. And that's about it here from uh, the National Sports Center. Once again, we want to thank you for tuning in here on BSN for all of the finals. We applaud all of the participants tonight. We saw sportsmanship, we saw some rough tackling, but at the same time, spirited play. And uh, it's all over now, except for the award presentation for this, the senior boys final.
and the 2012 Varsity Champions University of Canada. Thank you. 